Bob, you know, what you can do. Hi, Mr. President. President. How are you? Good to see you again. Thank you. Good to see you. Nice voice. Yes, sir. This is how Falls is represented. Oh, yes, yes, yes. 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 Under the circumstances, I guess I've been doing well. Yes, I have John Reed. Nice to meet you. That's the hot seat. Thank you. Mr. President, I think you're right. I find it very persuasive. Uh, this is uh, an important occasion for us. We want to thank you for meeting with us. Pleased to. I sort of feel like we're literally carrying the uh, mantle of uh, the industry on our backs at this meeting. I think it's one of our last chances to talk with you before the conference committee acts. And in that, in our conversation the other day, I thought you said uh, some very wise things. Well, uh, but first of all, we want to tell you that uh, the people in this room, and I think most Americans, even within the oil and gas industry, share your desire to lower, lower income tax rates for the American people. When they do come down, though, that does hurt the industry because it tends to dry up outside income. It makes the dollars that they invest in well more real dollars. But we still think that that should be done. In our conversation, you talked about, as I recall, Prime uh, Minister Bolivia. Hello. It's a pleasure to see you. I have a personal letter of Mr. Parsons wrote to you. Thank you very much. It's an to meet you personally. Well, thank you. I want to present you my according to this minister of Flanagan. I'm glad to see you. Senator Goldwater, after he steps down this year. 
Well, I hope they'll remember him as he honestly is. I think this, uh, I think Mary Goldwater, uh, even in the face of the defeat in his campaign for president, but he made a mark that I think changed the course of the Republican Party and uh, to what it presently is. Do you, uh, uh, do you stay in touch with him very much? Oh, yes, yeah. I've got another question on the Supreme Court. Are you pleased with uh, today's vote by the Judiciary Committee to recommend? No one has come in and told me how they, how they vote. 13-5 on request. I'm not sure what the vote was on Scalia, but they approved him too. No, I'm pleased, yes. Okay. It should have been unanimous in both cases, but there were some there that I think were 10 toward lynchings. People back in Phoenix want to know why have two-thirds of your Supreme Court appointees been from Arizona? And how many more can they expect? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, that didn't figure in, in it. it. It was the individuals themselves that... Uh, There's nothing special about Arizonans that qualifies them for the Well, no, don't tell <laughs> me saying that because that's been kind of a second home to Nancy and me for a good many years. Okay, I think that will, that will pretty much do it. Okay. I appreciate All that. Right. Though I would be remiss if I did not show you a picture of my new baby daughter, so, who at the age of four months had dinner at the White House when we had a backstage tour here one night and she got hungry and whipped out a bottle. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, now let me just as a, having preceded you a long time uh, in this sort of thing, let me warn you, enjoy it because day after tomorrow, She'll be as tall as you are. <laughs> Great. Thank you so much, Mr. President. Yeah, All right. Pleasure. Nice to meet you. I think they might want us to come in and sit down. Thank you very much. You, please. Yes, sir. So what would you uh, attribute uh, the uh, uh, late uh, interest which has been posed by members of uh, the Senate uh, as well as the high officials of your government uh, regarding the fact that uh, the New Mexico's government? Well, uh, maybe it has come about uh, because of some of the things, the, uh, such as the closer relationship now with regard to drugs and so forth. But uh, it was something that I had determined uh, we needed to, before I became president. That uh, here we are, three neighbors here in North America, Canada, the United States, Mexico, from north to south. And that uh, I just thought that there should be a closer relationship between these three. And so uh, President Dela Madrid and I have uh, met uh, every year in fact, uh, our, our first meeting was when he was just the president-elect before he'd even taken office. And, uh, we have kept that relationship going, and I think it is closer and better. And I know right now on the problem of drugs that concerns us both, uh, the Attorney General of Mexico and our Attorney General are working very closely together. Señor, ¿cuál es el resultado más importante y concreto de las pláticas sostenidas con el Presidente de la Madrid? Mr. Reagan, what would be the most important result of the conversations that you held with President de la Madrid yesterday? Well, I, again, as I say, as we keep in touch, and, you know, I've always believed that uh, you only get in trouble when you're talking about each other, not speaking to each other. And uh, we discussed a number of things. Uh, our concerns in Central America with regard to the Nicaragua situation, again, the, the drug policy, and uh, uh, strengthened again uh, our resolve to work together on resolving that, and uh, also the economic problems that are besetting Mexico and how we could possibly uh, cooperate and work and uh, help them through this uh, particular period. Did you reach some agreement uh, in the problem of Nicaragua? Yes, uh, I think we did. I, mainly, I think what was necessary was it was an opportunity for me to uh, 
reassure him as to what our intentions were and what it was we were trying to uh, uh, to bring about there. Uh, you are the point of view are different. You still uh, want to push against uh, the Malawa because she is a dictatorship. And uh, respect uh, with this uh, $100 million to, do, to, to reach what? Uh, well, since we have met nine times with the leaders of the Sandinista government uh, in an attempt to get them to agree to uh, sit down and negotiate uh, with uh, the others who were in the revolution against Somoza and who are now the freedom fighters because the Sandinistas seized power and violated the pledge that they had all made to the Organization of American States, a pledge that their goal revolutionary goal was uh, democracy, uh, free speech, freedom of press, free labor unions, all the things associated with democracy. When the Sandinistas took over, they made it, they ousted their former allies and they made it a totalitarian government. And what our attempt has always been in these nine meetings with them is to persuade them to sit down and negotiate the democratization of Nicaragua, to return to those principles that they had once pledged. And the, in every instance, the freedom fighters had agreed with us, they would lay down their arms to come to the table and have a peaceful political solution to the problem. And nine times there was failure on the part of the Nicaraguans, they ref or the Sandinista government, they refused. We believe, that it's going to take the pressure of the freedom fighters. And what we really think would be the best goal is if they have the strength to impose leverage, exert leverage on the Sandinista government, then we could still have a peaceful political settlement. And the alternative would have to be then if Nicaragua still won't see the light, or the Sandinista government won't, uh, then the only alternative is uh, to, uh, for the freedom fighters to have their way and take over. So do you think these 100 millions are enough to pressure him? Then, excuse me. Well, um, it, it depends on how long uh, it might take for a resolution of this problem, but I think right now, it can go much further than most people think it will because, uh, you know, the, the needs of uh, fighters or soldiers using guerrilla tactics uh, are much less than those of a more formal military structure. As a matter of fact, the rule of thumb in such a relationship is that normally uh, a government with its forces, have to outnumber the guerrillas 10 to 1 in order to succeed. Thank you, Mr. President. Do you, do you think, just the last one, do you think the, the, there is any danger in Mexico for the democracy uh, uh, because it's the way to come to the United States by the Nicaraguan uh, communist people? Well, I don't know whether I understand your question. Is it a danger? en cuanto a que en México pueda ser el conducto para que le atraviese el comunismo hacia Estados Unidos. Could there be any danger in that the Mexico might be uh, the bridge in order that communism might go through there in order to reach the United States? Well, let me just answer that in a broader sense. The Sandinistas themselves, early on, after they took over, they proclaimed that their revolution was not going to be confined to their own borders. In other words, they were going to pursue communist revolution throughout Latin America. Now that was their statement, not ours. And so uh, I feel we ought to take them at their word. Thank you, Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Well, nice to see you. Pleasure.
Hi, Mr. President. How are you? Nice to see you again. Good to be here, sir. Mr. President. We, uh, we appreciate, Mr. President, very much your hosting the uh, Vote America luncheon here two weeks ago at the White House. It was a tremendous success. And uh, we appreciate your support of our program. Uh, we're very, very grateful. Vern is president of the Outdoor Advertising Association of America. And his association has donated 10,000 billboards to run in 8,000 markets to get the message to our young people, 18 to 24, to please register and vote. Oh, and he has a small mock-up here that he'd like to show you. I'd like to present that to you, Mr. President. We have the Outdoor Advertising Association of America. We make small business. Thank you very much. We uh, we hope to be a part of making America's youth uh, cognizant of the of the necessity to vote. I think that's one of them. 10,000 of these right. throughout the country. Not great, but full size. Full, full size. size. <laughs> that's a lot. Right. That's, that's a, a, a little mock-up, right? You could bring the real McCoy in here. I'm really. Yeah. Please, Evans, we're, we're, so we're, we're, we're all so grateful to you for what you're doing. We're pleased to be a part of this. It's our pleasure. We've worked with your wife on the drug abuse program, and we'll continue to do this with the goal of the seat of But this is from the heart, and we really enjoyed being part of the program. It's just strange that they're the lowest their lowest uh, percentage of bullies in this That's right. In this age group. We're going to get that up, believe well, me, Mr. President. The youngsters are in the cars today, and that's right. where we'll be, that's where we're going right. to reach yeah. them. We'll reach them. I, just, for sure. I think it's great. Okay. I think I told the group when they were here before about Will Rogers' statement. Will Rogers said that the people we elect to public office are no better and no worse than anyone else, but they're all better than those who don't vote at all. That's, That's, That's right. That's a great line. Yeah. 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 That's great. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Appreciate yeah, thank it very, you for very your much. Time. Thanks. We really Thanks appreciate for your support. support. We're very grateful. Yeah. Appreciate it. God bless. Thank you, thank you sir. Thank you. Oh, that was fish. Are you supposed to be up on the question? Get on right here. Yeah, okay. If you can just. Just no, just a little close to the president's face. Why don't you pull your your pass off? Right. Yeah. 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 Okay, we have ten shots. Yeah. <laughs> Here we go. serve on your team and hopefully to get you to play on our team and to present you with our White House Fellows ball cap. <laughs>
<laughs> you can take the boy out of California. <laughs>